so I'm on my way to get my hair cut. Now, you might be thinking, wow, I must be running out of video ideas to put this up on YouTube. But no, that's not at all why I'm filming this. See, this is all the time I have to film today. And I want to make the point that even if you're so busy that all you have to study for the GED is 20 minutes or less, don't let that be an excuse not to study. If all you've got to study is one minute, don't waste it. My wife and I have been so busy lately that we've only had time to get our new couch out of the box, but not to put it together. Is that a cat toy or is that a box? Which is it? No, I don't think that's a cat toy. Tommy, it's not for cats. No, it's not. No, it's not. No. It's not for cats. All right, it's for cats until we finally get around to taking it outside. So here's my desk right here. So tell me, what do you notice about it? Hopefully you see that there's nothing on it and it's facing up against this wall. And the reason is because if I had it up against a window or in a room with the TV right in front of me, I know myself well enough to know that I'd get distracted and I'd have a hard time getting anything done. You don't have to have any kind of really sophisticated organization system. Like half the time I just put my stuff underneath my desk or I'll use like a little plastic filing cabinet or a bin that's close by. But the point is don't have things on your desk that can distract you because if it can distract you, it is going to distract you. Another tip is to study in intense, focused, short intervals followed by breaks. So for example, you could do 25 minutes of studying, take a five minute break, another 25 minutes of studying, take a five minute break, and so on and so forth. The tests are randomized, so literally nobody can predict exactly what kind of questions you're gonna get. If it's in a prep book or if it's in one of my videos, trust me, it's fair game for your test. So I was in a little better mood before I went for that walk because I don't have health insurance right now and I actually just got hit with a $170 fee to pick up a script. So hopefully between now and September 1st when my insurance kicks in, I don't get hit by a truck or something. That'd probably be pretty bad. I guess let this be a lesson to you that bad things and unexpected things are always gonna come up when you're studying for the GED. But the real test is how are you gonna bounce back from them? What do you think's in here? Cat toys? I don't think so. It's a book. So I was gonna read this for Halloween, but it's here early, so I might have to start it early. But that's a general tip for the GED, is to try to read as much as you can, because that's gonna boost your comprehension for the reading section, but really for every section. This book here, this is my old Kaplan prep book from when I was doing in-person tutoring. The prep book you get, it does not have to be Kaplan by any means. People often wanna know, they, they say, hey Parker, they wanna know if the textbook that they used, if it can be an older textbook, the answer is yes, as long as the textbook is from 2014 or later. The way you read the textbook to get the most out of it, it's not necessarily the same as you would read a novel, right? So for example, this section right here, this is on the scientific method, right? And so basically the, the best way to read is to first look at some of the headers, right? So look at the headers, look at the bold text, right? Because often they will give you key ideas. If you're using Kaplan, I'd imagine it's about the same for other textbooks but they often give you these key ideas here, right? And so you wanna look at those key ideas first. And then I also recommend go to the questions, read some of the questions too, so that way you know kind of what they're gonna be wanting you to answer. Then I want you to do all the practice questions, or if you're really short on time, just do enough of them that you have an idea of what's going on. And of course I want you to take notes. So let me grab my, a notebook here just to show you what I mean. So for the GED, I just recommend, usually just grab like a one subject notebook. Uh, you can grab something bigger, like four or five subject notebook too, but one should be enough because there's not a whole ton of stuff to memorize for the GED. But what you do while you're reading is, I want you to take notes, 
Put stuff in your notebook that you don't think you're gonna remember. Don't try to write everything. What I often recommend people do for their practice paper, or for their practice problems, is to get yourself some scratch paper like this, right? So this is kind of beat up because it's been sitting um, beside my desk here for a little while because this is what I've been using as I've been studying myself here. But I don't recommend putting, like when you're working on practice problems, I don't recommend doing that in your main notebook for notes because I think things are gonna get cluttered. So I just go to your local CVS, wherever you shop, uh, and just pick up like a packet of printer paper, uh, just a couple hundred sheets of like blank white printer paper. And I would just use that as your scratch paper so you don't get everything all, you know, moneyed up in your notes. Um, but anyway, so the main thing though is whether you're using a textbook or if you're using videos, now. A combination of reading things and watching the video, I think that helps most people make progress the fastest, but you gotta find what works for you. The only reason I would skip a textbook is if one, if you're really pressed for cash, it might not be worth your time um, or worth your while, um, or if you just know that you're not gonna learn well from a textbook, um, then you can skip the textbook, although I still would recommend it just so you can do the practice problems in the textbook. But you want to start by learning the material then you want to practice and you have to practice because you don't know if you're understanding it until you test yourself on the topics, right? And I also like to recommend for people to take notes down and so really learn the basics, practice on practice problems, take some notes down in your own handwriting and then you can wanna review those notes. A lot of people, they take notes, they spend a lot of time taking notes but then they never review the notes so it's kind of pointless but I would review your notes every couple days if you can, or every day if you have time to. Um, there's a good window of opportunity, a couple hours before you go to bed, or even right before bed if you can. That's a really good time to just read your notes, and that's really gonna help cement them in your memory if you review them closer to bedtime. And there's science and research that backs that up that I won't get into right now. Um, but that's really the key, guys. It's, it's start by learning the material through either a book or a class, or um, through YouTube videos, or however you're doing it then you want to do uh, take notes and practice and repetition. Repetition is really key, especially for the math and for other topics too. A lot of the stuff that's more complicated, like in the math, you can't expect to get it right away. Very few people are gonna see something complex in math for the first time or maybe the first time since high school and just get it right away. Not many people do that. So it's gonna take multiple times. You're gonna have to see the stuff multiple times. So you're gonna have to work on some topics get stuck, get a little confused, figure out how to get yourself unstuck. And that's oftentimes how you're gonna learn math, is you try something, figure out how to get yourself unstuck when you get stuck, and by doing that, you're gonna learn. So these are some tips for the GED. I hope this video helped you out, and I wish you the best of luck with your test prep.